That's far too much applause for this. <laughs> so yeah, my name's Natalie Clayton. I'm currently still a student at Aberté going into my fourth year and technically have an art job internship thing at a local game dev studio, so I can call myself an artist. But on top of that, I'm also very tired from a 12-hour 12 12-hour bus trip and only slightly on paracetamol, so this could be a disaster. <laughs> I like to consider myself quite a strong advocate for games as a medium being a great plate, like crazy good for people who are in minorities and just speaking for myself as a gay trans woman, very good for sort of LGBT plus minorities. As we had an earlier talk say, there are great space for just having like limitless avenues for exploring personality and identity and all these different worlds and opportunities that you can take part in and really just push the boundaries of yourself. And that is fantastic. However, <laughs> there are some downsides. I'm starting with the downsides because this is gonna be something I'll get out, out the way at the start so we can move on to the happier notes. Because I don't have a presentation, I can't really have like a big part one slide coming up. So I would just say part one is like, one, status quo, everything is terrible. No, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> so very early on in my sort of growing up teenage life, I decided that I didn't like sort of hanging out with people in the real world because I didn't get on with any of them. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time on the internet and a lot of time eventually on video games once we had a decent enough computer to run them. And I made the very bad mistake of spending a lot of time on, a, on one role playing server on Gary's Mod. Things sort of started out pretty decently. I was getting along with folks, sort of chatting, but I hadn't really socially matured at this point, and it was a very immature community, so eventually cracks started to sort of appear. Mostly when I started toying with the idea of my own gender, I started to get into friendships with people where I introduced myself as female, and I was going by... I've gone through three names so far. I'd introduce myself as that, but not really go through and tell them that I'm trans. So I kept sort of growing friendships, but when the trans thing came out, it got horrible, <laughs> completely horrible. And that really sort of shut me down for a long time. I was getting sort of just threats from people constantly, and it was putting me into a deep depression that kind of permeated my entire sort of mid-teens, I suppose you'd call it. This all sort of culminated in someone sort of outing me to the entire community. And when I chose finally to leave, it was left with a thread that said, and nothing of value was lost, which was fun. <laughs> but the problem that sort of arose there was I didn't have a real life sort of fallback plan, so to say. So I would still keep going there despite how bad it was getting and it would just keep growing and growing. I don't really have good segues on this because I hadn't really had much time to plan. But I want this to sort of jump into a part two where I moved communities to a different one. And it was sort of my first real forays into MMO gaming. The first sort of guild I was in was one that was on a small, small game called World of Warcraft. <laughs> and <laughs> It was a very strange community from sort of how I expected it was going to be, where, you know, you get this sort of image where it's going to be that South Park guy sitting in front of the computer with like Mountain Dew and Doritos everywhere. Little aside, terrible, terrible eating and drinking combination. I did an MLG shopping trip once that consisted of Mountain Dew and Doritos and felt sick for a weekend. <laughs> but this was very strange because the guild was mostly one or mostly northern europeans and mostly between the ages of about 25 to 30 with an exception or two and this sort of created a great little nurturing family-like atmosphere where i was able to sort of get along with people and really sort of explore who i was in a much safer area i was still sort of presenting myself as just female and not really going with telling people I was trans because this was still a period where I was having a lot of trouble in my personal life, just sort of in real life, at school, at home, and I wasn't really confident enough. This did lead to like little 
more sort of furthering pushing myself to come out to people. So I would come out to my best friend in the guild and say like, hey, this is who I am. And it actually went far better than I was expecting and far better than I was expecting from past experiences. It's very hot up here. <laughs> but yeah, um, this was a huge boost of confidence, a huge boost. And this was coming into sort of the end of my high school days. So as they sort of came to a close and I was finally able to sort of get away from a lot of the issues I was having in real life, I was able to sort of get into a much sort of more comfortable place in my life overall. For about a year, I sort of pissed around Europe doing volunteering work and I had very little online communication with people except with this small community from a different game I started playing who I sort of had a similar aspect with where it was kind of an in-between where there was a lot of sort of really shitty people, but there was also a sort of LGBT subcurrent where there was a lot of outs and prouds, gay, trans people who were just able to come up to you and message you and tell you like, hey, everything's gonna be okay. And this is kind of, again, my, I don't have any slide transitions or star wipes or anything to move on to this, but this is how I go on to part three, which is representation is really, really fucking cool, even at like the most basic level. It is kind of a thing in games where, especially in the last, I'd say, five, 10 years, even really sort of pushing for more and more diversity in terms of like gender, race, sexualities. And these are great because as I said before, the more there are like characters and games you can relate with, the more personalities and identities you can like put yourself into, the better. But this even extends down to like, not just in the media, but people who talk about the media, be they like developers or journalists. But even once you get down to the basic level, people who you're playing with, I made a terrible mistake this year, I think maybe just before December, where I got back into WoW in a stupidly big way. But this time it was after coming out and being at university for about three years where I've been living just full time happy and comfortable in myself and I've made a great sort of social circle of friends. So when I come into a new games community, I don't really want to bullshit about myself. I want to just be blunt. What I found was there was this crazy, amazing response to this where first I was getting people come up to me and messaging me in game or through Skype clients or the BNet client saying like, hey, I'm also trans. Do you want to like talk about stuff and just like discuss? And they'd have real questions about like where to go next with their like treatment or just how to get more comfortable for themselves. This was like really reassuring because I'd sort of become the person who'd been helping me a couple of years before. The strange thing after that was I was getting messages from cisgender people as well who were just genuinely curious. And I think this has just taught me that it's very important to just have people who can sort of act like beacons, who you can educate and just normalize the idea of being different within a games community. I don't really want to like say that this is the way you have to be if you're in a minority because everything should just be taken at the person's own space and time. But I found if we can just have sort of more of a normalization of everything like this, it makes things crazy better. I think that's all I kind of got right now. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. This was my time.